the size of that structure. How does the material support so much weight? Is it the same stuff as the other buildings? Yeah. I know it looks like some type of concrete, but the molecular structure is completely different. Whatever it is, it's a lot stronger and less brittle. Are the labs made out of the same material? No, that's just ordinary concrete. Although, it does have some molecular weirdness going on, too. Too little variation in the grain. about New Alexandria all the time. But realizing this place was built on its bones just brings it all back even more. We were so optimistic when we started. So full of ourselves. Thought we could accomplish anything. And then, in one single moment, it was all gone. I remember a flash, and then just lying there, realizing that my legs had melted. I tried to pull myself away from the fire, but the servos in my arms were broken. If Eustathius hadn't found me, sorry, just some old scars. Just when I thought we'd found all the weird stuff, So, humanity is great. I really believe that. And that's why I'm here. But I have to be honest with you, individual people, not always my favorite. I'm not the smartest guy ever, and I know that. But there are some people, man, some people are just so dumb. I don't even know if they're actually conscious. Sometimes I think their whole lives might be like a dream. They're just stumbling around, no idea what's going on, mumbling some random nonsense. And the thing that you have to understand about our time period is that a lot of these people wield enormous power. They run whole countries and corporations. Yeah, that's right. We've handed over our civilization to people I wouldn't trust to tie their own shoelaces. And if they're dumb, then what are we? I don't honestly have an answer to that, so just please try to do better. Whether it is true that Daedalus constructed the giant Talos, or as others say, he was the creation of Hephaestus, what we may be certain of is that he was made of bronze and had but one vein, within which flowed a liquid substance like blood, which some claim was quicksilver, and others assert was ichor, such as flows in the veins of the gods. The loss of that liquid caused him to die, as a man dies when he loses his blood. May we not then say that Talos, though created as a machine or a toy, had all the essential properties of a man? He moved of his own volition, he spoke and could be spoken to, had wishes and desires. Indeed, in the tale of the Argonauts, that was the cause of his downfall. If then a machine may have all the properties of a man, and act as a man while driven only by the ingenious plan of its construction and the interaction of its materials according to the principles of nature, then does it not follow that man may also be seen as a machine? This contradicts all the schools of metaphysics. Yet even the most faithful philosopher cannot live without his blood.
I've been meaning to talk to you. This uh, vision you had, the data stream overload, how did it feel? Hmm. Having your consciousness hijacked felt good to you? Just don't take this too lightly, okay? We're sturdier than our ancestors, but a mind is still a fragile thing. When we go to New Jerusalem, I'm going to have a cat. He's going to be black and white, and his name is going to be Bean. And I'm going to make sure that he never gets sick, and he never gets old, and he'll be my best friend forever. Monument, decorative for another puzzle. These labs seem to be everywhere, but compared to the technology we're seeing above ground, they're downright primitive. Are we even sure that the labs and the puzzles belong to the same people? There seems to be a connection between the experimental setups in the labs and some of the puzzle technology. Correlation does not necessarily imply causation, though. True. But just because we don't understand the connection, that doesn't mean it's not there. What we have here is two things that reflect each other. We just don't understand how that reflection works or what causes it. 
Maybe Miranda can tell us. The rotting remains of the old world should fill me with melancholy. Even here on this remote island, our ancestors could not escape their fate. And yet, I find there is something pathetic about these ruins that evokes anger and even contempt. I feel it is a mistake to accept this catastrophe with equanimity. What we see here should offend us. When witnessing this triumph of entropy, we should aspire to a warrior spirit. Even a kind of hate of the past and its failures that will never allow such a thing to happen again. There's so much to discover on this island that sometimes it overwhelms me. Every lake, Every forest contains an incredible, interconnected, permanently changing network of organisms. And every one of those organisms is almost infinitely complex and contains other organisms within itself. It seems impossible to ever really grasp, but then, step by step, I do understand. It takes time and effort, but it's not impossible. And there's a lot of joy to be found in simply taking the time to truly study something. I spent five years studying a single flower, and it never got boring. I sent the drone to have a look at one of the other puzzle clusters. It seems they remain inert until they're connected. I uploaded the pictures to the log. Should we check them out with the VTOL? Let's conserve fuel as much as we can. There's no point in going there if it's all dead. behind those has to be something special right you know what would be special an explanation good 
Let's get some measurements from this particle cloud. The bridge ring seems to be fully charged now. Try accessing the tower, 1K. I don't know if this is relevant, but St. Edward believed that Tetrominos represented the name of God and God's ability to reshape the world. True, but he was also mad as a hatter. One man's madness is another man's genius. When the craftsman Daedalus was imprisoned in the very labyrinth he had created, his only solace was his son, Icarus. To escape their plight, he fashioned wings of feathers and wax. He warned his son to fly neither too high nor too low, but his son, enraptured by the freedom of flight, flew too close to the sun. Thus the wax in his wings melted, and he fell to his death. What was the sun's error? The greatest fool is he who cannot tell the words of a story apart from their meaning. After the death of his son, Daedalus withdrew in sorrow to a foreign land. King Minos came looking for the craftsman to exact his revenge. The answer to a riddle revealed where Daedalus dwelled. But for Minos, that answer was his ruin. Consider King Minos burned in his bath as you seek your own answer. The megastructure, it's opening. Three receivers. Three towers, three beams, as we suspected. I think this is an invitation. Doesn't look that inviting to me. If you consider the size of the entire structure, then that opening must be big enough to drive a building through. Or oh, the VTOL. You want us to go in there, into the creepy triangular Maw of Death. Maw of Death? I think it looks charming. To quote 1K, Come on, now. Live a little. If this place is dangerous, it could pose a threat to New Jerusalem. We have to investigate. Oh, all right. I'm not winning this, am I? Nope. Let's meet up with the VTOL, everybody. We're going in. I finished my analysis of the particle clouds. At first I thought they might be some kind of nanotechnology, but I was wrong. It's a lot worse than that. What we're looking at is a completely unknown type and state of matter. Completely inexplicable within our understanding of physics. Created and manipulated by... someone. Yakut, take us in. Aye, aye, sir. Have any of you ever read an ancient writer called Ian Banks? I guess not. He postulated the concept of the outside context problem. That's when a society encounters something so advanced, so different, that they simply could not have conceived of it. That's what this is. This whole place is one giant outside context problem. And we're headed right into it. I think I can set down over there. Should I? Please do. I can't wait to get a closer look. Setting down. Okay, everyone. We need to explore as much as we can, separately if need be, but stay in touch. Record anything interesting you find. 
and pay special attention to any clues as to who built this place and why. The schematics we found in that lab were extremely incomplete. So if you can find any more of those, that would be great. I think someone should stay at the VTOL just in case. I volunteer you. See you later, Al. This thing seems to be broken. Hold on a second, 1K. I think I can find an override for that door. Maybe after that you can help me with this elevator? One problem at a time. What's going on with these file structures? Okay, door should be opening. Now, about the elephant. Isn't this an incredible space? Look at it all, it's beautiful. That's good, that's excellent. I find that a lot of people these days can't see the beauty in things created by human hand. They can look at an ant colony or a coral reef and be impressed, but if it was made by humans, they just don't see it. It's good to be humble as an individual, but we have to be careful not to lose track of our accomplishments as a species. If we're impressed by the complex patterns produced by animals, then this, this should be breathtaking. Okay, can we talk for a second? That whole thing with the elevator just gave me the creeps. When we first arrived here, I was really excited. It's such a huge place. The technology is so advanced. If we figure out what it all means, we could really change the future of New Jerusalem. The mayor says we have to avoid repeating the mistakes our ancestors made to stay humble, to not reach too far. And that sounds very abstract, but I've seen the ancient cities. I've seen how much they built, how much they grew, how far they fell. So I've been thinking, what if all this sets us on the same path? What if this is too much power for anyone to control? Then what do you think it was?
Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way, but that does make sense. The more control you have over nature, the more you can deal with its unpredictable elements. So our ancestors go too far. They didn't go far enough. Interesting. Thanks for talking to me, 1K. I know we're in the middle of something, but I kind of needed that. Looks like another set of puzzles. Same pattern, one gate, three receivers. Like some sort of fractal symmetry. Job 1K. out of parts of the system. I think I've tracked down some more schematics, though. Let's see. This might do something. Or not.
Well done. Madness. Even the walls are bursting with power.